Hello, I'm Solo Cross, and today we will be unboxing the uh, Forgotten World Five Forge Games Kickstarter, which has just arrived today. So here it is. Everything that Fireforge Games have sent to me for backing their Forgotten World Kickstarter. It has been a long wait, so long that I nearly forgot their Forgotten World. But in fairness, they did deliver. And everything is present, which is not so often the case with Kickstarters in general. The Kickstarter was for their new Northman and Living Dead line of plastic multi-part models. I dropped enough money on them to get one of each box, plus enough to double up on the Northman Warriors and Bowmen. I took the opportunity to get some Albion Knights as well, which we will also look at today. As part of the reward, the package includes six resin character models, two of them mounted. So, what drew me to this Kickstarter? Well, I have a hobby project which I have called A Tale of Two Witches. In this project, I will be building two opposing armies for the old world of Warhammer. One will be a Bretonian army led by the Fey Enchantress, and the other an undead army led by a vampiress called Malfleur of Musilon. You can check out a Tale of Two Witches by heading over to my website solocrossgames.co.uk. See the link in the description. You can probably see at once why this Kickstarter was so attractive to me. The Living Dead models should do very well for the Musilon army and I hope the Northmen will make for nice alternative Bretonians. Whether they will work depends on their exact scale. GW minis are notoriously chunky and large for their notional scale. Uh, most historical lines, including Fireforge Games' own historical minis, look very small in comparison. This makes them unsightly to use together. Probably this difference in scale and proportions is by GW's intention to deter players from using the less expensive models of competitors to play their games. However, I suspect that Fireforge Games' new fantasy line is proportioned and scaled to fit in with GW's own strange proportions. Since GW has discontinued their own Bretonian line, there is a small gap in the market for models which will work as Bretonians for all those players out there who would rather stay in the old Warhammer world rather than get into Age of Sigma. Uh, there are quite a few model manufacturers out there now making substitute War Old Hammer models. And it does seem that Fireforge Games is also competing for this market, if their Pegasus Knights are anything to go by. Pegasus Knights are quite a uniquely Bretonian unit. Whether the Forgotten World kits and the Albion Knights actually fit in with the old GW Bretonians is one of the things we will examine in these kits later in this video. For now, let us take a closer look at the box art of each kit. First, let's look at the Northman. Looking at the box art, we can see the Northmen cavalry are light horsemen armed with spears and shields. The horses look particularly nice and seem to have a lot of options for varied poses. My hope for this kit is to use them as alternative Bretonian mounted yeomen. For this use, they are a little less than ideal since it does not appear they have any options for carrying bows. Perhaps that might be kit bashed from spares from the bowman kit. 
I will save for another day a rant about the absurdity of cavalrymen carrying both spears and bows at the same time. But absurd or not, that is the mandatory armament for mounted yeomen in the last Bretonian army book. Another point is that the mounted yeomen from the Bretonian book do not have as an option for barding as these models have. This again may not be strictly wissywig, but I will have to go along with it. The Northman Warriors I will use for Bretonian men at arms. The kit has weapon options for swords or spears, but not halberds, as is generally preferred for. Bretonian men at arms. I am fine with having them as spearmen though. But there is something that really leaps out to me about these minis. Do you see it? How about now? Yes, they have a remarkably close, really identical, aesthetic to that of the Stark soldiers in Game of Thrones. The full length gambeson or leather jack, whatever it is, and helmet shape are a, an exact copy. The artist has even added a wolf head decal to the shields and banner in case it was not obvious enough. There is some shrewd marketing in that design. Not only will the models be desirable as alternative Bretonians, but they will also serve perfectly as Stark soldiers for any Game of Thrones RPGs and war games out there. Well played, Fireforge Games. Well played. Obviously, the Northman bowmen will serve me as peasant bowmen. Ideally, peasant bowmen would not have light armour as these models do. They can take light armour as an option though, so these models will pass for WYSIWYG. One great thing about this kit is the parts to make braziers, as you can see in the bottom right close up. This is a thoughtful addition for making this kit useful as Bretonian bowmen, who can take braziers as an upgrade to give them flaming attacks. Once again, some very intelligent marketing went into the design of these kits. Before we move on to the undead models of the Kickstarter, let's just take a quick look at the Albion Knights kit. I ordered this kit as an add-on. It was not part of the Kickstarter itself. I hope it will serve to make alternative Bretonian knights. From the box art they do look like a great fit as fantasy knights. We just have to see how their scale and proportions compare with GW's minis. Notably their lances are very long. I have a few misgivings about that. For one those long lances will be particularly difficult for storing the models and for another they will be more likely to break compared with stubbier lances. If the lances are assembled lowered, then they will not rank up so well. It may also indicate that the design philosophy behind this kit was to be true scale, like a historical mini would typically be. If so, then they will look out of place and undersized next to chunky GW knights. The Pegasus knights advertised below, the main art, perhaps suggests that the models were made to fit GW's Bretonians. The juxtaposition does imply compatibility. Also, Fireforge Games already have plenty of nice medieval knight kits with true historical proportions. One would think they would not need to make a specifically fantasy knight line unless it offered something different to the historical minis in terms of scaling. We will see how they measure up in the 
the last part of this video. Okay, so we will take a quick look at the undead now. Starting with the peasant kit. I am looking at these as alternative zombies for my Musilon army. I will probably be mixing them in with GW and Mantic zombies for the variety. Perhaps we will see in another video how that works out. This kit uh, looks like it has a good variety of options for making many unique looking zombies. Aesthetically they are better looking than either Mantic's or GW's zombies in my opinion. Their clothing makes them look more human compared with the more naked look of the other company's zombies. Here we have the Living Dead Warriors kit, and it is a nice looking one too. I will be using them as skeleton warriors in my Musilon army. Again, I will probably be mixing them in with GW and Mantic skeletons for the variety. Of course, the models in this kit are not skeletons as such, being just better armed and armoured zombies. But I figure the skeletons in the Skeleton Horde probably would have some variation in the degrees of decomposition. So these will just be the more recently deceased. I notice that a few of these warriors have dress that marks them out as former Northmen, but only a few of them. The rest seem to have two other dress types. One type looks quite a lot like Lannister soldiers, uh, from Game of Thrones. But recall that the Northmen are derived from the Stark Sheik. I can't place the third type seen in the two models on the far left of the art. The presence of these types suggests that Fireforge games are leaving room for themselves to release more uh, Game of Thrones like human factions in the future. last kit of the um, undead line uh, is the un uh, living dead knights kit. I will be using this kit as alternative black knights. I think GW's own black knights probably look just a little bit better and have the advantage of also being able to make uh, hex raids too. However GW wants £22.50 for their kit which only makes five when this kit hits, um, it will be something like £16 for 6, which is significantly cheaper. The kit comes with a couple of undead dogs too, which could be thrown in for extra direwolves perhaps. So, let us have a peek at the sprues inside the Northern boxes. First up, the horse sprue from the Northman Cavalry box. Each of these sprues will make three horses. Uh, the Gamberson barding is integrated with the horse body, so there's no option for having them unbarded. Uh, right. Let's have a look at the Riders now. As expected, there are no options for making them archers. Uh, they can be armed with swords or spears. Uh, each, each sprue has three riders. And there are two extra heads for individualizing them. Right, so let's have a look at the Bowman Sprue now. Each of these sprues are intended to make six Bowmen. Uh, unlike the Rider Sprue, this one has a couple of extra torsos as well as extra heads. Some of the legs come in two parts. I suppose if one was creative, one might exploit these options to squeeze a couple of 
extra men uh, out of the sprue. The legs are the limiting part. There are enough for six men. But see, if uh, by giving some of the men only one leg and hiding the missing leg with some overgrown foliage or some other strategically placed basing ornaments, we can lift that limit on those parts to match the torsos and heads. Uh, ah, but the bow arms are also a limiting part as there are only six of them. So any extra one-legged men will have to get their arms from the warriors or cavalry box. All right, uh, well, let's look at the warriors. So the warriors come on two different sprues. Um, two very subtly different sprues. Uh, each can make three complete warriors. I'm not sure what yet why they uh, did not use one sprue that makes six, like the Bowman sprue. I suppose they uh, do have a lot more weapon options. These warriors can be made with swords, spears held with one hand, or spears held two-handed. So they perhaps needed the extra sprue just to get all the options on. Uh, with a little conversion, two-handed spear arms could allow these models to be made into pikemen or halberdiers. Just uh, chop the heads off and place it with a poleaxe top if you have that in your bits box. Or alternatively take out the whole shaft and put a, a brass rod or something and then attach the point back on the top for a pike. Uh, like the bowman, many of the legs come in two parts for the potential to craftily spawn some one-legged extras. Uh, the Northmen have one other sprue, uh, this one here this is um, a generic command sprue for which every box gets every Northman box. Uh, it's command sprue with champion, musician and standard bearer bits. You can see, oh it's got a torch as well. Um, and capes, we've got capes and we do like a few capes don't we. Uh, it looks like it's got two, two, two shafts for standard bearers but only one standard top. Um, some extra torsos, arms with swords, I suppose for champions, and a single bugle for a musician. So, not so that's what with this one sprue being in all the boxes, that's will provide for some fairly samey command options. So, that's that's the Northman sprues. Um, next up, I think we'll look at the Albion Knights. Uh, the Albion Knights are split across two sprue variants. Uh, the mounts are on one and the riders on the other. So here is the sprue for the mounts. There are only two horses per sprue, so there is much less variety um, that you can make from this sprue compared with the Northman Cavalry sprue we looked at earlier. Uh, though we do get an extra head, so that's something. The tail pieces have this extra little knob that goes inside the horse's rear to help keep the tails from falling off. I often find um, plastic horses with missing tails in the pre-owned market, so that is a good thing for long-term tail retention. 
just looking at them, I uh, wonder if they are not a little on the small side compared to uh, GW's horses. Um, just as I feared back when looking at the box art. Um, we'll have to um, make some up later and see how they size up. Now let's move on to the riders. So this is the riders sprue for the Albion Knights. Um, each of these sprues will make four riders. Uh, the legs and torsos are all one piece, um, but there are a lot of head options. There are, um, I think there's eight there. And also there are separate, differently styled shoulder pads here, quite a few of them there. Um, and also they have these capes as well, four capes, um, which are obviously optional. Uh, so, even with the single piece torsos, there are a lot of options for um, individually individualizing the knights. Uh, they can be armed with a, a variety of different hand weapons. We have axes, flails, whatnot. Uh, and of course those long lances we uh, saw earlier. There are six shields. Um, three of which are integrated with the left arm. I'll just turn that over, as you can see. Um, uh, and the other three um, will fix to these left arms here, which have actual straps. So th there's not really any option for fielding them without shields, because you either have to have them or you have to have these left arms, which have straps on them. You could cut the straps off, I guess, but most likely you'd want to have the shields anyway, so that's no great loss. Um, there are absolutely no command options, though. Uh, well, I suppose a standard bearer could be made from the lance uh, bits. Um, and there are plenty of fancy helmets for and pauldrons for champions. So we are mainly missing um, a musician bit, like a horn or something. Okay, so that's that's the album night. Let's go for the peasants next. The undead peasants, here we go. So, unlike the Northmen, the living dead um, do not have a separate command sprue. Um, the command options are either included with the main sprue or just not present at all. Uh, see, this is the peasant sprue and there are no command options for them. Each sprue will make six peasants. The torsos and legs are all one piece. Um, but there are a lot of heads and like arms for, um, you know, so there's still decent scope for individualizing them. Next up, we will have the warriors. And, and now here is an oddity. I don't know if you can see this, right? Um, I'll put that to the side. I don't know. They actually have a separate head sprue. Which is a bit weird. Uh, so the main sprue has all the arms and torsos and then this other separate sprue for the heads. I'm not sure what they were thinking with that. Actually it does look like it attaches here. So it actually probably was one mould. It was one mould. But they made this separable for some reason. I'm not sure what the purpose was to that. Perhaps you can buy them separately. Um, so, uh, like with the peasant sprue, the arms and legs are all one piece. 
Two of them are Northman style, should be this one and that one. And these two look like Lannisters from Game of Thrones. And then these two have a different style again, perhaps just generic medieval. Uh, they can be kitted out as spearmen or swordsmen, and they have their command options included on the main sprue, unlike the Northmen. And so, all right. Lastly, let's look at the Living Dead Lights Knights. Sorry. Um. So here's the Riders sprue. Like the Warriors sprue, the command options are uh, included on the main sprue. Each one will make three riders. There's a good array of weapons, including lances, quite short lances compared to the Elbian Knights. Um, however, the main weapon arms are two pieces separate at the elbow. See, that's. And then the actual upper arm is here. That's one piece. I'll find another one. There's one there, one there, and one there. And these axes, flails, and maces, they actually are separate at the elbow. So um, that's going to be a bit fiddly to uh, assemble, although it will give you a lot of scope for articulation. In uh, Six head options. They are all a bit samey though. They do look quite a lot alike each other. And that's it. So let's look at the horses quickly. So here are the horses. Quite like the Northman horse sprue, it will make three horse. Um, unlike the Northman horse, the barding is an optional extra, uh, though it's not a very substantial bit of bar barding. Um, I'm not sure how much protection that would give, really. Um, oh, and it comes with a dead dog, but it seems to have only one pose you can make, so not how much use that will be. And so that's the undead. So just to wrap up, I'll a quick look at the bases they come with. Cavalry come with these rectangular ones and these oval ones. So you can, uh, you know, uh, base them how you would for whichever game you're making them for. Uh, rank and flank on square and skirmish on ovals. Uh, so it's nice to have that choice. Um, the infantry, of course, have squares and circles. Um, they are just flat pieces of plastic, mine, so it's nothing fancy. Uh, GW bases, of course, have the hollow insides, um, which allow for fancy shenanigans with weights and uh, magnets, if you like, which is a little bit less scope for doing that with these flat ones, but, you know, it's not impossible. Uh, all right, now, so I will make up some of these models so that we can see how they size up next to GW's mis minis, uh, back in a flash. Okay, so I have quickly assembled a Northman warrior, a Northman cavalry, and an Albion knight. To see how they measure up to G GW Bretonians, I had a rummage in my stash and found an old Bretonian archer, an imperial engineer, a Bretonian knight and an old yeoman champion. Now let's see how the Forgotten World infantry measure up first. So here we have a Northman Spearman uh, to represent all the Forgotten World infantry, which should all be scaled in line with him. 
And here we have a Imperial Engineer, um, also from GW. This is or a Bretonian Bowman uh, from GW also. Uh, and we can see the Northman fits in pretty well. Uh, the Northman is not not at all weirdly proportioned next to these GW minis. So we can be absolutely confident picking up Forgotten World infantry kits to use alongside official GW miniature infantry. And this is very good news for my project A Tale of Two Witches, um, which will make heavy use of Northmen as alternative Bretonians. And also I will be using the Living Dead models in the Musalon Vampire Army. And as it happens, uh, I have a ton of these old Bretonian archers that I picked up from eBay for pennies. Uh, they are boring models um, that came out before multi part, uh, before the multi part Bowman kit. Uh, they are monopose and with just two variants. Uh, they were released for cheaply filling out a backline for a front line of nicer looking metal Bowmen back when most GW models were metal. I do not like them particularly, but even now they are readily available in bulk on eBay. And since their proportions fit so well with these Northmen, I could improve their looks and variety by kit, kit bashing them with spare Northmen bits. Certainly, um, they have legs and bow arms they can donate to the cause. Uh, if you'd like to see what these old Bretonians would look like kit bashed with northern northman stuff uh, so subscribe to this channel and then you will be notified when i upload the video uh, right so with the infantry all good let's have a look at the cavalry right so now let's look at how the northman cavalry and the Albion Knights look next to GW's cavalry. Even with the Northman infantry fitting well with GW infantry, uh, there's no guarantee that the cavalry will too, because of course there is a horse in the mix. So here is the Northman cavalry model and an Albion Knight. The Albion Knight is looking quite a bit smaller um, next to the Northman, even with them being from the same company. So let's bring on the GWs now. Here is the Petonian Knight from GW and an old metal yeoman champion missing his horse head. I think you can see the Northman Cavalry fits pretty well with the GW ones. Um, the wheels are falling off though for the Albion Knights. The rider does not seem overly small compared with the old yeoman. But his horse really is a bit midgety. I say the rider is okay. Let's just make them a little, compare them a bit closer. So let's get that in shot properly, sorry. Or even focus. So yeah, they are quite similar in size. Slightly smaller. But then if you put him next to the to the knight, the Bretonian knight, and oh my lord, definitely the one on the left is a very much bigger chap. Still, with a lot of the, a lot of the um, small size of uh, these models, these Albion knights being down to the horse, I suppose you could potentially solve this problem. Uh, with a horse swap, if you have uh, suitable other horses in 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 your stash, um, so let's have a look how he looks. The Albion Knight looks on the Northman's horse. I I don't know that that looks too bad to be honest. 
or even we could put him on the GW horse. It's okay, yeah. Um, of course, if you did that, then what are you going to do with these? And you could put your yeoman on it. I mean, you kind of would expect yeoman to be riding ponies rather than full-blown war horses. Um, so that's what these little horses could be. They could be just battle ponies. Who doesn't want a battle pony? Um, they don't. They have very narrow uh, saddles, though. And they fit these dudes perfectly, of course. But if you wanted to fit someone else to it, I think you're probably going to have to cut that back bit off. Um, but uh, I don't know. That looks too bad. Battle pony, you know. It's a real shame, though, because. Um, Bretonian knights are so hard to find now. Um, so, you know, if the Albion kit had been scaled more like the Northman cavalry, they would have made an ideal alternative to uh, Bretonian knights. And I don't know. As it is, just seeing it next to this dude, Right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't see myself using them as Knights of the Realm or, or, or Grail Knights. They're just way, just a bit too small. It's not even just the horse, it's the dude too, really. Well, people come in all shapes and sizes, as do horses. So maybe a few of these Albion Knights... Um, mixed in with other knight models uh, could look actually more natural than most regiments do with their identically sized men, like an army of clones. Uh, the Albion Knights could just be that odd little chap on his little horse, you know? We're not all supersized people. Um, or else, if one does not have moral qualms about hiring child soldiers, perhaps they could be juvenile knights. I mean, how old are the knights errant uh, of the Bretonian army book? I do not recall, um, but since they are supposed to be young and impetuous knights, eager to prove their valour for the first time, uh, it might be that they could only be middling teenagers, not yet full grown say, 14 or 15. Well, I think that's how I might play them, as Knights Errant. Just stick them all in one unit um, and explain how they all happen to be midgety compared with everyone else by this uh, idea that they are, you know, teenage knights. Uh, I'm sure the Fey uh, Enchantress who leads my Bretonian army is will be all in favour of the occasional children's crusade. Um, but my quest for alternative Knights of the Realm and Grail Knights will have to continue with different kits, I think. So that will wrap it up for this uh, video. It's probably gone on long enough. Um, do subscribe and... Keep an eye peeled for future videos because uh, I will probably be painting up these dudes, kit bashing and all, doing all sorts. So uh, bye for now.